Welcome friends and fellow collectors. Now is the time. You guys have asked for at least two years now for me to do an update video on my 187 scale Department of Transportation slash uh, Highway Department vehicles. So without further ado, let's see each and every one of them. Starting off in the back, we have a trio of concrete mixers by Bowley. The first two are internationals. Uh, the third is also an international, but it's a newer 7600 model. Custom Matchbox Sweeper, a uh, Mercedes-Benz Unimog utility truck with a plow, which is by a company called High Speed. If you've never heard of them, don't worry about it. I never have either, or I didn't either. Uh, we have two Bowley roll-off, 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 roll-on dumpster trucks. Totally ignore the fact that that one has an oversized load sign on the front of it. That used to be one of our tractors. Next, we have a Sanitation District um, Bowley garbage truck. And over here, this Peterbilt with this long bed, which also has the stakes on it. This is a Herpa Peterbilt stake bed slash flatbed truck, so you can take those stakes out if you don't want them. One of my first customs that I ever did over 10 years ago now is this Matchbox for Working Rigs Freightliner VAC truck, uh, which is why it doesn't look as good as some of my other things do. Uh, River Point Station F-350 service body, River Point Station F-250 pickup, and then an Atlas 90s Ford Explorer. Triaxle um, tag-along trailer, flatbed trailer. And then these two airboards plus the compressor in the back were made by my good friend on Instagram, uh, G. Anna, I believe. I can never get that name right for whatever reason. Um, I specifically asked him to leave the arrow boards blank because I was going to make my own arrows uh, and decals, and I, of course, a year plus later, have not gotten around to doing that yet, but I will at some point. Next, we have a uh, modified by me, kit bash by me, Matchbox GMC uh, plow and salter, Bowley International plow and salter. That salter body just fits in the back of any dump truck. It also can come out, obviously if you're using the truck in the summer. And then we have a proper salter body, which is the, the salter body that is permanently affixed to the frame, and that's another GMC top kick by Bully. All right, moving on to the dump trucks. If you need one, we can probably help you out. Uh, we have several um, single axles or tandem axles, whatever you want to call it. If it has two axles total, I call it a single axle, but some people will disagree. So anyway, single axle, single axle, crew cab single axle, uh, custom short frame tandem axle, coal body, which of course we have absolutely no use for here in the highway department, but government surplus funds had to be spent somewhere. Uh, then we have several tandem axles from Bowley, International GMC, another GMC, and International 7600. This one with the silver body is actually from Scene Master, who got all the molds from Bowley. And uh, that one, I did some dump bed extensions on it. Those uh, those wooden pieces are from Cyclone Models. And then I did the alternating DOT striping on it. Another kit bash, tandem axle with a drop axle. Uh, this is the Diecast Masters dump truck that comes with the cat cab. So I took the cat cab off and put a International 7600. It actually looks quite good in person. Um, turned out quite well, I think, anyway. So there's that one. Next we have a Matchbox Real Working Rigs Oshkosh Dump Truck and Plow. The plow is obviously removed at the moment. Couple Herpa, no specific manufacturer, but if you look close, they kind of resemble old Freightliner front ends and old Kenworth front ends. And then an old Hot Wheels um, gasoline truck, which I have kit bashed with a new tank, new wheels, new tires for a non-potable water truck. Okay, to the front row, trio of bucketer utility trucks. This one has, uh, you know, the tandem axle, single axle derrick truck, single axle bucket truck, work in progress box and equipment van, uh, GMC flatbed with a no name brand dollar store from 30 years ago sweeper, which uh, scales out perfectly. And of course, it was color. It was orange in color, so here it is. 
All right, now on to one of my favorite customs that I had commissioned for me. This one is by my buddy Cherokee Valley Railroad. You can find him on Facebook. And it is a line painting rig, completely furnished with uh, everything you need, including the guide wheel, which uh, folds in and folds out at the front. That's the piece with the little wheel and the red flag on top of it. The cab came from an old Matchbox MR truck. Okay, here we have a... Um, at Nair, I believe is how you say it, asphalt distributor body. That's 3D printed that I painted, decaled. And you can see at the back, it's got the spray bars that fold in and out. Uh, here is a, a Thern Ford C-Series stake bed, single axle. Uh, and then we have another 3D printed one from Shapeways, body at least. The cab is from Boley, the GMC cab. And this is a, a barrel truck. You can see it's got the catwalk or the step in the back for the guys to put the cones or barrels down as the truck is moving slowly down the highway. All right, speaking of trucks you're going to see on almost every highway job, these two are attenuator trucks. And I know most of you know what that is, but there may be some new people, so I'll break it down uh, as quickly as I can. Basically, those are very large. The yellow pieces are very, very large cushions that are designed to catch. Um, you know, the 16-year-olds that are texting or TikToking and not paying attention, or the 85-year-olds that um, should have stopped driving 10 years ago and fell asleep. The idea being that they hit the back of those instead of running down the men and women in the work zone. And there are plenty of horrific videos on the internet um, where an attenuator truck would have saved some lives. Next up, tandem axle uh, GMC stake bed. Some more stake beds that with no real significance except this one, which has the, the hand uh, patch or the, the hand compactor, which goes on this asphalt, plant, uh, asphalt patch truck, which is another custom. And then the one here that I grazed right over is another custom from Shapeways. This is a, a service body, which I put a lot of accessories. Some of these accessories come with the kit. Most of them do not, including a generator, spare tires, some barrels, uh, toolbox, and then you have acetylene tanks uh, and other equipment. So, pretty nice looking truck. All right, guys, that is the first shelf done. Let's take a momentary pause. When we come back, we will finish the second and last shelf. All right, everyone, thank you for sticking with me. Unusually, let's go from front to back here. Uh, we have this is a newer release, the Burkina Peterbilt 281. Uh, tractor. You can get those in a variety of different colors. They're awesome models. And it's pulling a not matching at all 1950s low boy uh, from GHQ. That's a white metal kit. Two modern low boys, both by North Scots. This one has been uh, kit bashed with some Boley wheels that look actually pretty good on it. One of them is being pulled by a Boley um, tandem axle, which I put some flags on. That's where the oversized load sign should go. It just hasn't made it there yet. And also I put a light on top. Uh, this is from Trucks and Stuff, I believe, slash Tonkin, slash one of the manufacturers that that company goes by. There's like 17 different names. And it's a tri-axle uh, Peterbilt 367. Looks really good. I like that one a lot. Uh, Herpa Freightliner with a sleeper cab, pulling a Trucks and Stuff, slash Tonkin, slash everything else. Spread axle flatbed. Uh, Bowley, um, single axle tractor, pulling a drop deck trailer. I believe that is from a company called Proto Max or Prototech, something like that. They're out of Canada. They actually have some pretty good plastic stuff. All right, next up is a uh, Ford. This is an Aeromax from the Matchbox Premier Series back in the late 90s, pulling a flatbed trailer. Uh, this actually used to have the U-Haul decal on the door, which I removed so that it could fit in this collection. I think it looks pretty good. Herpa Max CH600 model, pulling a um, dump trailer. Here's another custom that was done for me by uh, Gianna. It's an old Mac RD model that looks like it's been working for several, several decades. You leather it up and it looks quite good. Uh, pulling a kitbashed Masto gravel or bottom dump trailer, which is painted up to look exactly like the ones around me, 
up to including the construction vehicle don't follow sign on the back. Uh, back to Scene Master for a minute. Fuel tanker with a fuel trailer. That's an international uh, 4300 Durastar. Uh, Atlas Ford L900, I believe, tractor pulling a Tonkin trucks and stuff. Uh, dry bulk pneumatic trailer, um, pneumatic tank trailer, which is actually an awesome model. I like it a lot if you want to see it up close. And the tractor that that originally came with, that the trailer originally came with, you can see that on my channel. Actually, you can see pretty much all of these on my channel, either in separate video reviews or some of the HO files. So this is just a general collection overview, but if you want a much closer look, I would encourage you to search it under my various playlists that I have organized here on Diecast Emporium for you guys. All right, let's continue. We have a, um, a Thern Ford C-Series pulling a wedge trailer. All right, here's another beautiful custom for me done by my buddy Robert Kelly, a Rotec SP2500 shuttle buggy. Next three Vierkin Group models are by Herpa. First up, we have a Vierkin W250i coal planer, a Vogela Super 1900-3i tracked asphalt paver, and then a Ham HD Plus 110 vibratory asphalt compactor. All right, let's finish up some of the machines. That Bobcat telehandler is a newer release, probably one of the first times you've seen it here anyway. Uh, and that's by Masto Masto. This one I will never get right until the day I die. It's by a very oddball company, Makina, Makwina, something like that. But it's a Volvo DD90 HF double drum vibratory asphalt compactor. And then a NZG Ham uh, 3412 smooth drum. And yet another custom for me. This one was done by um, Capital Customs NE, I believe, on Instagram. Another great guy. And that is a Volvo SD135. Hobby and Works Publishing, Volvo L60. First gear, Volvo L180H. Uh, wheel loaders, clearly. And then we have a uh, Komatsu shareholder gift, GD675 uh, Road Grader. An old Ertl John Deere 310 SE backhoe. Actually a decent model for the price. And then an even older, in terms of release date, Norscott Case 580M, backhoe loader, also a decent model. And next we have another of the um, Komatsu shareholder gifts. This is the Komatsu PC210. It's got the uh, all the intelligent stuff on the back. All right, another Hobby and Works publishing model, HWP. This is a, Vol or, yeah, a Volvo 240. Um with some different tracks that I put on because it came with a track missing and the other one looked awful anyway. Uh, a Thern or a Thern John Deere 650 dozer. And then finally to conclude the video, we have a couple of spare tractors just to pull our trailers along if we, if one of them breaks down. The first one is by Malibu. It's an Aeromax uh, sleeper cab. And then just a Bowley tandem axle tractor with an international 7600 cab. That'll do it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope you appreciate the time that it took to set this up as well as break it down and film the video for you. Um, I love sharing these type of collections with you, but the most important thing is if you guys continue to support and enjoy them. So if you like this kind of thing, be sure to show it some love in the comments section and in the like section, and make sure you watch it to its conclusion. As always, thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time, take care, be well, and I will see you in the next review.